That was a heck of a college basketball game. Both teams played extremely well, I thought. And uh, just like the first game, it went down to the final couple of possessions. And that's what good teams do. They play to the final minute or two. And fortunately for us, uh, we came up with timely plays. Jordan's three. He didn't shoot particularly great today, but when the game on the line, he bounced up and made one. Terrell Gomez bounced up and made a big three uh, with the game in the line. And then Trey Pulliam uh, obviously went coast to coast with four seconds on the clock and hit uh, his best shot, which is his runner, uh, off the glass for the victory. And I'm so proud of their effort and the mental toughness we displayed uh, uh, hang in there and stay together in such a co uh, close competitive game. Hey, Coach, congrats on the sweep. Uh, back here in studio, I was screaming, how time out, time out, time out on that last play. Did you like the look better for Trey to just push it up the court? Well, to be honest with you, Ben, I was trying to take a timeout. So <laughs> sometimes, uh, I know sometimes uh, people get mad. They don't think I take enough timeouts. And then when I didn't get one, we won the game. So it, basketball is a game of momentum. And, and sometimes the, you can draw something up and not get as good as what you got. And uh, uh, I don't mind taking it out, you know, and, and just going up the floor. We've done that for years, dating back to DJ Gay and the Colorado State game, uh, just trusting in your players. And... And so I had no problem. They got it out. I just wanted to make sure we attacked to the basket. And uh, Trey did. He attacked hard to the basket, and he made a really uh, clutch game-winning shot to get us a victory tonight. And then what's the schedule going to look like over these next few days? You don't play again until Thursday. Are you going to try to get these guys some rest after four and eight games? We are taking tomorrow off completely, which we all need. Uh, the coaches, the players, we all need a day off. And so I heard Sergio, our trainer, say that uh, he's going to be open for treatment from 10 to 12, ice baths and treatment to try to start healing our bodies and getting ready for the next series. And a quick question for Trey. Uh, Trey, can you take us through that last play uh, from inbound to your shot? What was going through your head? Uh, I just knew I had four seconds on the clock. I mean, Coach always talked to us about uh, how many dribbles you could have and the amount of time you have. So, I mean, I knew I had four, uh, four seconds, so I had four dribbles, so I just tried to get it down and get it up on the rim. I knew if I missed Nate or somebody, Matt would come try to clean it up. So I just try to get a shot up. Have you ever hit a uh, game leader like that before in your career? Yeah, I hit like one or two in Juco before. Same kind of shot? Uh, not a runner. In Juco, it was a step back, pull up, but I mean, a game winner. You're a right-handed player. You got the ball on the left, and you just went straight down the left side. Is that what you wanted, that shot? Or, or you know, the tendency for a right-handed player would be going to Go to his right. I mean, for me with the floater, uh, it's easier for me to go to my left, so I can just get one, two, and just go straight off of my left. I mean, just like a layup or something. So I mean, for me, it's easier <clears throat> going to the left. Was there any uh, intention of you to pass it, or with four seconds, were you just going straight, straight for the rim? Um, if I didn't have a shot, maybe. But I mean, I really was just trying to create something. Like I said, get it up on the rim and try to have somebody else come clean it up. And then for coach. Um, this game was almost identical to the last game. Both your second games in, in Mountain West have been like, almost identical. It seemed like the tactics did change that much from the first to the second game. Is that, is that a pretty accurate assessment? Yeah, we went switch five the last two or three minutes of the game, and they did a much better job. They threw it inside twice to K.J. Himes, and he made baskets, had an N1. So they made their adjustments, and they really took advantage of our switch five. Uh, we, we want to take uh, Sheffield away from that play. And so someone else had to beat us, and KJ almost beat us. And then the last play, Mark, you know we like to foul up three at the end of the game, but this is the second game in a row where Sheffield has the ball on the bounce trying to create space, and he's such a good player that if we run out to foul him when he's on the dribble, he's probably going to get a shot up as we foul him and get three free throws. So I thought Trey did his best to contest it, but he had a big-time three to, to take the lead for him. <clears throat> and you said you were going to call a timeout, you know, how do, you, how do you balance that? Sometimes you, you like to have that chaos and you get a better shot than if you call a timeout. What was your thought process and why did you want to call them then? I just thought, you know, that uh, we worked on a couple plays that we could run with four seconds on the clock. And, uh, but uh, I've been here long enough to know that good players make great plays. And dating back to DJ Gay's wins he had for us against Colorado State, UNLV, they're, they all stick in your mind. And this one, will stick in my mind. The, the play Trey made with four seconds coming down the floor uh, to win the game for us. And, uh, you know, it looked like it was going to go to overtime, and, and Trey made the play that uh, won it for us.
And last thing from me, um, did something happen to Jordan? It looked like he was getting treatment in the middle of the game. It looked like he took a blow or something in his ribs. Did something slow him down? Yeah, I'm not sure. I think the doctor looked looked at something, but he was able to keep playing. So I'll find out about that, obviously, when we get back to the locker room. Nate hit a couple of clutch free throws, obviously, there at the end. Um, was the inbounds play designed to go to him? Yeah, with the ball stuck in the dead corner, I just thought he'd be the most apt to come and get open because of his size, and usually – Five men don't deny, and I have great faith in Nate from the foul line. I mean, we can look at what he's done this year, and he's shooting a high percentage. Uh, he's good under pressure, and so I called the play for Nate to come and get the ball. You know, if they didn't trap right away, I wanted him to go back to Matt, who inbounds and is a very good free throw, to, free throw shooter also, but they fouled him as soon as he touched it. So I was fine with either Matt or Nate going to the line. And then um, with, with uh, Trey being able to go the length of the court, it seems like a lot of times at the end of the game, it ends very close to the basket. Um, why, why are guards able to, to run the full length of the court and get close to the basket in that situation? I think in a tie game, they're trying to avoid fouling. You know, they want to make someone make a shot to beat them. So when a guard gets speed to the basket, it's hard to step in front and keep him from getting there if he builds speed. And Trey built speed immediately in the backcourt, so he's at a full run coming down the floor. So at that point, to try to cut him off, they would have had to probably foul him. I just wanted to ask you, you know, Memphis scored double digits for the third consecutive game, which was a career first for him. Talk a little bit about that accomplishment. Yeah, I mean, this looked like old school basketball. We threw the ball inside the entire second half. So whether it was Nate, Matt, or AG, uh, we threw it inside, and they were productive. They got baskets. They kicked it out for assists. And so it reminded me of uh, old Big Ten basketball where you just pounded it inside. And that's what we did the second half. We pounded it inside because we weren't shooting the ball very well. And so we had to find another way to win, and uh, we found it by putting the ball inside to Nate, A.G., and Matt. Definitely, and then, like you mentioned, you weren't shooting very well tonight. Tonight's team was heavily defensive. How do you guys plan on enhancing your offensive performance moving forward, especially looking ahead to next week? Well, it's always hard if you're not making jump shots. I mean, we go back to Colorado State, we made 14 and 14 threes in each game. And these last two games, they did a good job of taking away the three. So we had a counter by going inside. Uh, to the low post and say, we'll, we'll play one-on-one -on -one in the post. We're good enough to score in there. So it's a different game, and that's the way it's going to be all year. Utah State will have a different game plan that we'll have to figure out and adjust to as the game goes. So uh, we have multiple threats. We can score outside, we can score inside, and usually that leads to pretty good offense. Definitely, and then the four, day, the four games and eight days playing schedule, how has that impacted the team's performance, especially in terms of exhaustion? Well, you'd have to ask them that. I think they were tired. We gave them a day off yesterday, but they gave me everything they had. I put on the board uh, mental toughness, extra effort. You know, that's been a trademark of our program, and I thought we had that tonight. Question for uh, Matt Mitchell. Um, first half, the team only had three points uh, off the bench, but 11 in the second. How much of a difference did that second half bench production prove to be in the game? Uh, very big difference. Uh, I think we, they came in and, and gave us energy. Um, that's what we talked about at halftime as a team. Um, just as players before we went out was, was keeping that energy high and, and in, the, in the team huddle during timeouts. Um, was, was talking about keeping that energy high and um, staying concentrated. So uh, I think they did a great job coming off and, and giving us energy. And uh, after two close games here in this uh, quick series, what's the biggest takeaway that you're going to take away from this uh, whole process? I think the biggest takeaway uh, for me personally is, is my body, um, how, how you're treating it. Um, just over the course of these uh, these four games that we've had, um, I just felt a little little worn down, and you just find different things to, to be able to do and, and to be able to get your body to feel better. Um, now I took a couple of those measures, um, and I feel great. Uh, I took an ice bath, and, and I'm good. Uh, Matt, while you're there, you know a lot of teams in that situation would not have inbounded to their center, knowing they're going to get fouled. What are your thoughts about you know you're, you're the guy throwing the inbound pass? Uh, were they a little bit surprised, you think, when you threw it to Nate? I definitely think they were surprised. Um, but uh, that, that's all about trusting your, in your teammates um, and just knowing they can knock down the free throw. Nate has proven. Uh, he, he proved last game, I think, he knocked down uh, eight or nine free throws. And, and so uh, I think coming into this game, uh, we had nothing but, but trust in him. And, and in terms of um, the way Nevada played you, um, BYU played you guys the same way, just took away the perimeter or, or, or really bottom perimeter shooting. Do you suspect you're going to see a lot more of that this season? 
Uh, I think it's a possibility, but uh, I I know that teams have all types of game plans um, and mm. can be different types of versatile. Uh, so moving along, uh, whether it's the same game plan, different game plan, I, I got to be the same person, got to play my same game, be aggressive, find the open man. Um, so it, it's, it's nothing really uh, I'm going to change about my game, but it, it's definitely something that, that we'll look for um, moving on into the future. And, and one quick one for Dutch. Um, you guys would get leads and they would just come right back. Is that just a function of not having the legs to sort of sustain a longer run? They make big, they make big plays. I mean, their guards are as good as we played all year, you know? So these are big time guards, Cambridge and Sheffield. And then all of a sudden you end up with Himes getting a couple putbacks inside baskets. And, you know, these are two good teams. And so uh, any thought of us blowing them out, you know, was out the window of the first game. These are two teams that played competitive games against each other. Uh, I'm sure they'll feel the same way. I'm, they'll feel good about the game they played, other than uh, we made a couple plays down the stretch and, and they didn't. And that's all the difference in college basketball.